also that we need to um, endorse and grow what in the in the current system and structures does still work um, and is developing actually because I'm, I'm actually quite an advocate of the parish system because I believe that it does mean that that everybody, absolutely everybody, um, who is you know of the population of England, um, has the potential for a contact with a local church, and I think that's a really good thing. And when local churches are good local churches, they can um, they can connect with those people in a very good way. So I wouldn't want to start deconstructing that, but I, I think there are initiatives that are going on that are beginning to uh, to ask what other models there are too of church, and therefore other models of ministry. Um, so yes, a bit of that, but also, you know, some of saying, as I said, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, yeah. Well, in just a, a minute, it's going to have to be a broad brushstroke, but basically, um, I don't know any ordained woman who may remotely possibly become a bishop, be appointed as a bishop, who would force her Episcopal ministry on any parish or individual who did not want it. And so first of all, I think we have to um, take a step back from that and just say, hang on, we're talking about godly, ordained women who have been appointed to this senior leadership office, who will, who will relate to their clergy, who will go out of their way not to do anything that would offend the, the, the traditionalist or um, conservative clergy and they would have to negotiate it because every circumstance will be slightly different and this is the one of the things why we didn't want a national code of practice because how do you put every possible nuanced um, eventuality into a code well I don't want her ministry if my um, daughter's getting married to a man who you know come on and 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 you know, there's been talk of almost this cross pedigree card that, that now um, clergy will have to walk around showing that they were ordained by a man and that they were, and on and on and on and on, you know, and, and, and we just cannot have this. We just cannot do that because there is no end to it. So I would want to say um, we're talking about people who can look each other in the eyes and say, well, well first of all, a, a bishop is a bishop they will have that jurisdiction. And so any priest who is willing to remain in the church and remain um, uh, serving in a diocese with a bishop who's a woman will have to accept her Episcopal authority. <laughs> and if they do that, then everything else can be worked out um, face to face. You don't want uh, your bishop who's a woman to come and do the, um, you know, a Eucharistic service? Fine, let's invite someone else that type of thing. What, what I very much hope we won't have is an act of synod mark two with special bishops, the flying bishops carrying on. Yeah, the flying bishops still flying around designated only to minister to those people who will not accept the ministry of women, bishops who are women. What we've suggested is that our existing um, flying bishops in the Church of England be, be made proper suffragans and, or assistant or area bishops. Um, and have a, a proper ministry and, 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 and become part of the Episcopal fold. I, I think we all do it in different ways um, because the you know the phrase lots and lots of workshops and discussions just makes me feel exhausted but actually it would it would energize some people I mean quite seriously I'm not I don't want to demean workshops and discussions but I just think oh no that's not my way of doing it I mean my way of doing it is to write about it I think really to try and write it down and therefore I, I work out what I think by writing it down and I work out what the language might be to describe it by writing it down um, for other people it will be uh, workshops and discussions for others it will be simply you know a, a key relationship Relationship which enable with somebody uh, which enables them to discuss this kind of stuff and therefore to clarify it for themselves and then try to share it more broadly within the church in some way. I think it's all sorts of different things. You know, it's the feminist theology group here, isn't it? It's uh, it's all, all kinds of, of examples of, of that sort of thing going on. And I get bishops coming up to me all the time saying, Well, you know, we advertise for this archdeacon's role and only two women applied. And, you know, the shortlist, you know, we couldn't even include one, you know, and things like that. So it's not only 
the structures and the institutions fault. We have to do something to empower and enable women to, to, to do better, to think it is, it is for them. This job is for them. And it's been said, and anyone who works you know, in, in, um, in uh, HR and probably knows this in, in any profession, is that if, if a male reads a job um, advertisement and thinks they can do, what, maybe 20% of it, they'll apply it, they really want to have a go. A woman will read it, and it, it, you know, she has to do sort of at least 80% of it. She'll say, oh, it's not for me. Um, and so it's a, you know we have to to help women to understand if you think you want it go for it and then change the shape of it once you're there. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, people in the church structures on the ministry division and in other places have got to be looking at this. And some of what Rosemary was saying about tackling the very issues that that you raised, um, I'm happy to say is I thought yes, those are actually now being discussed mm -hmm. in different mm -hmm. subcommittees of the ministry division, mm -hmm. but they're still at that level, they're not, it's not being rolled out yet, it's not really happening, and what we need is critical mass. So more women need to, to just risk and do it, go for it, yeah. Uh, well, things which seem obvious to me, which are really not obvious to an awful lot of people, I think, because they're just coming at it from a different place, but, uh, but not only inclusivizing our language about ourselves, but inclusivizing our language about God. Um, and therefore being able to name and experience different aspects of God I think is tremendously important. Um, I think our liturgy in the Church of England has come some way and you know, there's some, uh, it's been some very positive changes but I think there's an awful lot of scope um, for alternatives and for the development of, of liturgy which does touch on aspects of God as, as female um, as well as male or other images that might be used as well. I mean, Catholics, you could argue, are actually quite... <laughs> their dresses, aren't they? <laughs> 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 you could kind of form a situation terribly formally dressed, you know, and all in black. Why? Yeah, I very rarely dress that. That's quite interesting, actually. Yeah. When I was pregnant, couldn't fit in my clerical shirt. Um, you know, I used to wear all sorts of alternatives, but that was because of a, of a particular circumstance, I suppose. Women do try and find ways of, you know, not always wearing <laughs> the black shirt. I think we've really had to struggle to accept our own identity as priests. And, and um, the person who mentioned that that might not be immediate, that actually just because a vote went through and we became priests, actually the real absorption into ourselves, that we have this role, and, and do certain sorts of things in church and have that authority and power, that takes longer to grow. And while you're growing it, of course you experiment with wearing clothes like the men do, because actually, for a while, you don't know what else to do. Uh, so I suppose part of me wants to say, I mean, warmed up to this a bit, is that um, you'd have to create an alternative branding. <laughs> you know, there's got to be something which indicates visually what you are. And so, um, so if it wasn't this, then it, it, it would be something else. So my, six-year-old's primary school teacher did say to me the other day, why is it so unflattering? <laughs> you know, clerical wear on women, it's dreadful. Just black, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, yes, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be black.